Bloom. We're exploring medical trends today, and our next guest says that depression isn't just a mind game, it's a gut game, too. So joining us now is an internationally recognized expert in Ayurveda medicine and author of The Prime, Dr. Kolri Chowdhury. Welcome to Bloom, doctor. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Well, I'm really intrigued by this. How is our mood linked to gut health? Well, we've been talking about this in Ayurveda for thousands of years, and I couldn't explain it in terms of modern science until we started doing research on the gut microbiome and the way that it impacts our brain health. With that research, I was finally able to use a language to explain what this ancient system has been saying all along, which is that the microbiome, your gut microbiome, all of the different bacteria and organisms that live in your gut actually influence mood and that's why food is so important well i know that chocolate certainly makes me happy but i <laughs> i want to hear from you about the traditional medicine side of this how does medicine confirm the link so what we're finding out is that these bacteria and yeast and all of these organisms that sit in our gut they can actually excrete different neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters is the language of the brain. It's the way that the brain talks. So these organisms in your gut are actually talking to your brain. In fact, you mentioned how chocolate makes you happy. The majority of serotonin, which is your feel-good neurotransmitter, actually comes from your gut. Your gut is producing it, and your brain is receiving it. Wow. It's fascinating how the body works and all these different parts work together. So how can changing up our diet then affect our mood? The way that you eat determines who lives in your gut. And when we eat a whole food, natural diet, we actually create an environment in our gut that supports the healthy bacteria and other organisms that have actually been living with us for generations and generations. They're playing the long game with us. They want to survive with us because they have for many, many, many years. But when we eat the modern day junk food, it actually starts to promote an environment where the unhealthy bacteria grow. And they're in it for the short run. They're simply sending you, you know, these huge spikes of feel good hormones like dopamine, which are related to addictions, including food addictions. And they get you hooked on the bad food because they simply want to grow for the short run. They don't care about sticking around with you from one generation to the next. So the food that we eat determines the type of organisms that we support in our gut. Wow. Okay. So if we want to make a, like a longer lasting impact and positively improve our mood and our outcome on things for the long haul, what are some suggestions that you have? Well, since unfortunately the majority of us now are in a cycle of food addictions because that's the way that modern junk food is made, the first thing I do is I introduce some of the ancient Ayurvedic supplements that help to break this addiction cycle. And this makes it's much easier to choose healthier foods. When you're in an addiction cycle with food, it's very difficult to change the way you eat. So some of the herbs I recommend are ashwagandha and brahmi. Ashwagandha helps to reduce the stress eating and cravings, and brahmi reduces the these dopamine spikes that result in the food addiction. So those are two key herbs that I introduce for the brain. And then there's a wonderful herb that I introduce to help support a healthy gut, which is trifla. So before I ask people to begin to change what they're eating, because I know they've got food addictions, I first set up the right biochemistry so that they can actually succeed. Wow, I'm a firm believer in herbal remedies, and I also like meditation. Can you emphasize how meditation can also help our mood, too? Meditation is huge, and most people might think, well, sure, meditation is great for the brain, but meditation's actually great for the gut as well. When we do studies on Tibetan monks that have been meditating for long periods of time, meaning for many years, and we look at what type of bacteria is growing in their gut, they actually have higher concentrations of bacteria that support you know, uplifting mood and fight anxiety and depression. So meditation is, of course, good for the brain. It, it shifts neurochemistry, but it also shifts gut health. Wow. I never would have thought that that reaction could happen in our gut from meditating. You just never know how these things work out. Thank you so much, doctor. That's my pleasure. Thank you. And we'll post more info about this on our website for you. And